Welcome to the Radiology Vault, an open repository for radiology educational content designed for learners and medical professionals. Presented by the Michigan Medicine Department of Radiology. Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Maggie Zhang, one of the abdominal radiologists at Michigan Medicine. My lecture is ultrasound shield wave elastography for assessing liver fibrosis. I have no disclosures. First, I'll give you a brief overview of liver fibrosis in chronic liver diseases. Then I will talk about shear wave elastography of liver fibrosis and practical issues on performing high quality liver shear wave elastography. Chronic liver disease is a substantial worldwide health problem, including chronic viral hepatitis B and C, metabolic dysfunction associated steatotic liver disease, MASLD and metabolic dysfunction associated steatal hepatitis, MASH, autoimmune liver diseases, iron and copper overload. Liver fibrosis is a slow, insidious process that occurs in most types of chronic liver diseases, resulting from persistent liver damage, consequent wound healing process with excessive accumulation of extracellular matrix proteins in the liver. Progressive fibrosis can lead to cirrhosis and its consequences, such as portal hypertension, liver insufficiency, and hepatocellular carcinoma, which often requires liver transplantation. Tissue stiffness is often related to underlying diseases. For centuries, doctors have relied on palpation to detect tumors, particularly those located near the body surface. Elasticity imaging provides a non-invasive method for measuring tissue stiffness, functioning like an extension of the doctor's hands to palpate deeply located tumors. This technique is a valuable tool in the diagnosis and management of diseases. Over the past two decades, elasticity elastography technique have advanced rapidly. Today, most modern ultrasound scanners come equipped with shear wave elastography, including point shear wave elastography and two-dimensional shear wave elastography. This lecture is focusing on ultrasound shear wave elastography. The key concept of elastography is that it measures liver stiffness, not just fibrosis. It can be influenced by fibrosis, increased hepatic pressure from portal hypertension, vascular congestion, increased blood flow from food digestion, and inflammation. These are the Radiology Societal Guidelines for Liver Elastography, for your reference. Shear wave elastography uses focused ultrasound to push on the target liver tissue to generate shear waves, which propagate laterally away from the region of excitation. The ultra-fast imaging from the same probe tracks shear wave propagation, which directly correlates with tissue stiffness, with quantitative results in meters per second or kilopascal. In point shear wave elastography, an RV pulse is used to generate shear waves in a small region of interest, typically 1 cc in volume. Real-time imaging is used to avoid lesions and large vessels bile ducts. The sonographer can select different portions of the liver to sample. For 2D shear wave elastography of liver, we use the similar technique in a larger field of view and region of interest. We have um, real-time imaging to avoid lesions and large vessels and bile ducts, and the sonographer can select the different portions of liver to sample. Quality map is an important feature of 2D shear wave elastography in the latest versions of ultrasound machines. It can be used to assess the quality of measurements, motion, or other artifacts. It uses a stoplight map with green meaning good data, yellow meaning caution, not so good data, and red meaning 
stop data not usable. We use the quality map to determine where to place their RIs with a quality measure. Five measurements may be appropriate. Quality maps can find many, but not all artifacts. So we still need to evaluate both the quality map and the elasticity map together to make the conclusion. How to perform a liver shear wave elastography exam? So an intercostal approach to the right hepatic lobe is preferred. Patients should raise right hand above head to increase intercostal space. The sonographer needs to optimize the grayscale image to find the best acoustic window and take the measurements during breath hold in a neutral breathing position and avoid 1.5 to 2 centimeter subcapsular depth. We take the measurements at about 2 centimeter deep to optimize our feet displacement, there is a sweet spot at 4 to 4.5 centimeters in depth. Again, avoid large vessels, bile ducts, and lesions, and the our feet poles should be perpendicular to the liver capsule. Pearls for a liver shear wave elastography. We need to control breathing in a neutral position no shadowing, liver should have uniform intensity, transducer should be parallel to the liver capsule, optimize region of interest near 4 to 4.5 cm from transducer if possible, assess the velocity map and quality map in 2D shear wave elastography for artifacts and avoid taking measurements in those locations. If there are significant artifacts, delete and try again. In point shear wave elastography, avoid reverberation artifact since it is not visualized. Measurements should be taken 1.5 to 2 cm below the liver capsule. And we obtain a history for confounding factors such as fasting, congestive heart failure. The rule of four from recent SRU update are for viral diseases and MASLD only, there is not enough literature on other etiologies. If the liver stiffness value less than or equal to 5 kilopascal, there is high probability of being normal. By adding 4 kilopascal to 9 kilopascal, and then another 4 up to 13 kilopascal, which rules in compensated advanced chronic liver disease. If it's greater than 17 kilopascal, it's suggestive of cirrhosis and portal hypertension. How to report results? So we follow SRU consensus best practices to report median stiffness value and IQR over median as quality of measurement to allow for improved reproducibility of serial measurements, patients' position and equipment, including machine manufacturer and transducer frequency, should be reported so that similar equipment and technique are used on subsequent examinations. Discussion of how results are being reported with referring clinicians is also recommended. In conclusion, Detection of significant fibrosis and cirrhosis is important for diagnosis, clinical management, prognosis, and follow-up of chronic liver disease. Current literature supports the non-invasive use of various elastography techniques to assess liver stiffness. To obtain accurate stiffness measurements, adherence to a strict protocol is required. Both patient factors and Scan, scanning factors affect results. Thank you.